Kick it! Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. Hard-headed. We're excited that you've joined us as we have a conversation. It's time to join the conversation. All right, welcome to Hard Headed Podcast, episode number 158. I'm your host, Chet Sears. As with me always is Matt Amos and Troy Trussell. We've got an exciting episode for you today. What's on Troy's mind? Followed by our top three aggravating things about a grocery store. This was sent in as a request. Actually, I got texted while he was at a grocery store, very upset about being at the grocery store, and said, why don't you guys do a top three on this? Brad Shores, here you go, man. Your top three aggravating things about a grocery store. And after that, Matt's going to close this out with a good word. Troy, what is on your mind? Back from by popular <laughs> demand. Things I just don't get. Things I just don't get. And this is... Uh, Tell me how fun it is to like see something happening, and it, you're like, "Oh, this is dumb." Oh, I could write this down and talk about it later. That's right. It's fun. So I actually had a, a hard-headed listener, hard-headed fan, text me some that he wanted to to bring to the show. So I got that shout out to Josh for uh, sending me these. Uh, most of them are traffic complaints, though, <laughs> and I can agree with all of them. You probably are the source of some of them. No, I am not. But here we go. Uh, Traffic complaint. People that can't read merge left or merge right signs. And they think they are more important than everyone else. So they cut off traffic and create a bottleneck issue every single time. This happens at every one of these places in in this great city of Wichita, Kansas. Can I, can I get an amen? Wichita just doesn't know how to merge anywhere. Yeah. They're, who cares about the signs? They don't know how to merge onto an interstate. <laughs> yeah. This, they cross all the white lines all the time. Oh, I got to get over there right now. No, you don't. Go wait till the dashes. That's what I say. Yeah. That's what the law says too, Matt. I wait for the dashes myself. That's right. That's what everybody should. All I, right. I agree. I sometimes like to follow the rules. Sometimes. Yeah. That's one of them. So there's a there's a merge downtown where you get if you're going east from down to if you're take, going south down Broadway yes and you take a left headed east <coughs> going up the ramp to get on Kellogg mm-hmm. there's a merge right there if you were merging from the right lane into the left to the going left to the one lane mm-hmm. it's almost I'd say eight out of ten times. You do not have the right of way there. You should you should yield to the people on the left, right? No, it's a merge. You should just file in like a zipper and, and merge it on in. Yes. There's okay. no yield there. Okay. You should just file in and merge. Eight times out of ten, you will get honked at by doing that. Or are you on the right side or the left side? If you're on the right and you're merging into the left like you're sp- everybody's supposed to, not necessarily. It depends on what the sign is at that intersection. The sign is a merge. No, but it'll have a line that's straight and a then line, a line a that, line that turns. Which that's lane curved. merges? Yeah, the curved is on the right. Yeah, that means whoever's in the left has the right of way. No. That's yes. Not what that means. That's exactly what that means. Troy Trussell. They should merge together. No, it means you merge together, but the person in the left has the dominant lane. The person on the right doesn't have the right of way. Well, they should merge like a zipper. But they don't have to yield to you. You have to yield to them. Because your lane's going away, not theirs. Uh, That's uh, the problem. Josh is complaining about you. I just predict, I predicted this. No, I, I don't 100%. agree with that. that. That's what the law says. Well, get out of my way because I'm merging in. No, you need to obey the traffic laws. No. How long have you lived in Wichita? Have you, is this rubbed off on you? No, that's that's a merge. You yeah. zipper merge. No, that is not a zipper merge sign. That means the people that are in the lane that is solid. I'm going to look this up. I'm right. Uh, I don't have to look it up. I've been driving for 20 some odd years. So, so I, I, and I always that. and I always. How many tickets have you gotten? All for more speeding, than, more than one, for more than one, more than <laughs> one. Yeah. OK, well, I've, I, I'm, I have less traffic violations than you. Mark it down. 
I got merge points are violations. specifically set up for vehicles to merge from two lanes into one yes. in a zipper fashion. Uh, show this me the sign. Show me the sign. Flowing. Each car should alternate zipper fashion into the remaining nope. open lane just before the point of closure. No, that's, you're not. You show lane, me the sign. That's a lane closure. That's not. That's not a merge on an on ramp. Well, what's the difference? There's no yield yes, sign. No, anywhere. it's not. It's not a yield sign. It shows you. Oh my gosh. I, I still don't see where I'm in the wrong. See, in, in lane closure. Call me Matt Amos, but I, I'm not wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong on this one. <laughs> no. No, I'm not. All right, anyway. I'll find it. You go ahead with your list. Uh, I, 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 I'll give you a. Uh, maybe you know this one Tyler Road. You know Tyler Road? Yeah. And you're uh, on, you, you go north on Tyler Road off of 21st. There's an old Chicago right there next to IMAX. You know, Tyler, are you with me? Yeah. Jose Peppers used to be there? Yeah. You have right lane. And it goes like And this. a left lane. The right lane goes like this. And the right lane ends, right? Yeah, it if, ends. If the lane ends, that's the junior lane. This the, is the senior lane. Yeah. And the sign will be like this. The sign is not like that downtown. The yes. sign is like this. Yes, it is. No, it's like this. Is it just one lane? No, it's two, but it's like this. Yeah, the one that's angled is the, you have to yield to the one that's straight. I don't know. You do. I, I don't, I don't yield. This I'm the, saying I look, don't yield. That, I break the law. You're then. the problem. You're no, the not. problem with the merging. No, I'm not because people should just zipper in like Look, this says the sign. They don't yield. You have to adjust your speed to them. They don't have to adjust your speed to you. They've already built up more speed because you're in the right hand lane there anyway. If you're, uh. if you're going right. But uh. look, think of it this way, Troy. Standing man, dominant, bowing man, submissive. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Standing man, bowing man. This has been an educational ep uh, portion of okay. our podcast. I, then, I'm <laughs> like, then I'm going to start. I feel like we've made one better driver, maybe. So then, I, have you seen so this? So I this should sign? start speeding up and, this, and not letting people zipper in. No, you should be I in the left lane. Jerk. You should be in the left lane and not let people come in. You you should be in the left lane. So I should be a jerk and not let people come in. No, and not zipper and have them like just sit there. That's not. That's that's not. You right. have. You should go. You should get out of the way. But you accelerate. They yield. Yeah. That's how it works. This sign, is that the sign you're talking about? No. Let me see it. No. No, it's 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 this one. I know exactly what sign you're talking about. I tried to sh he said that that didn't Cuz there's one at uh, Central and one uh, How about that? Doesn't compute. Yeah, that one. That one. All everybody on that right should just like zip no, around. No. Oh, the that's the people on the right have to yield to the people on the left. And the people on the left need to get on about their business. Don't don't lollygag and don't slow down to let yeah. people in. Don't slow down to let people in. Lollygag, you used it. <laughs> There's so many wins in this episode. I don't even know. I'm yeah. so happy. Yeah, this is left lane has the right of way. Right lane needs to find a way to get in. All right, I'm gonna put this up on the screen and you can. Tell us your thoughts. The law's the your law. Thought, it doesn't, matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> well, there's a lot of laws yeah. that I don't abide by, but they're the law. You know? Which, which well, ones are those? You can't be frustrated with people honking at you when you're breaking the law to get in I front don't of. get frustrated because I go. You, you, you're, you're causing Josh I to, didn't say eight times out of ten people are honking at me. I yeah. said eight times out of ten people are honking. Look, here's the thing. Josh, one of our hard-headed listeners, is frustrated this, he's he's gonna be crushed when this episode comes Dude, out. Josh is not frustrated with me because yes, I get is. on about my business. He's like, "Hey, you're you're people in Wichita don't know how to merge," and then you're like, "Yeah, tell me about it." They they don't know what they're doing, and then we find out it's you. It's not me. It's I, you. I know how to merge, <laughs> and I drive fast all the time. You're not helping yourselves. Trooper Ben's gonna listen to this episode and, and come visit Troy. I tell you what. Man, keep you better find another one. Bring the Billy Club. Yeah. All right. Why? Why? <laughs> I don't get it. When? Uh, why has Wi-Fi become the ultimate term for internet? And why do we all depend on it so much? This is another one of his. 
Wi-Fi like, is actually just the radio wave of bandwidth. Right, right. Do you have Wi-Fi? They're asking if I have internet. Right. The public has been way undereducated on this, but it would be one of his, uh, but it would put one of his major services out of business because he, he does that. Provides Wi-Fi. Well, he provides... Uh, internet. Internet server. He sets up He's an home, home entertainment systems. So, and stuff so for, instead of them calling and saying, hey, I need Wi-Fi in my house, and we be like, hey, dummy, you don't even know what Wi-Fi is. He's going to say, (laughs) sure, make the check out too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, uh, um, it's more branded, but like Kleenex is, is a brand, not a tissue. You know, what's, what's another one of those? Hoover and, and, in Great Britain, you say, I'm going to Hoover. Duct tape. Instead of, yeah. Yeah. Instead of vacuum, they say Hoover. Yeah. I need duct tape, and they actually make duck, duct duct tape, tape, and duct tape. So he's saying that they should uh, they should deploy good equipment instead of selling more bandwidth. Like AT and T and Cox, they make millions on selling more bandwidth, which never really fixes the problem. You know what? Your mom knows that story. Yeah, because. There's there cuts out all the time. She's got like the state oh, of the yeah. yeah yeah. They're just selling yeah. crap. Yep. All right, uh, a couple more. Let's see, I don't get it. All right, this is this is one of my pet peeves. It has nothing to do with freaking driving. Thank God. <laughs> Because you're about to get destroyed if it was. <laughs> <laughs> no confidence in the driving ones. No. I don't get it when people blow their nose in public, especially at a restaurant. I'm with you. It's disgusting. I'm trying to eat over here and you got crap flying out of your nose and I got to yeah. hear it. They got it flowing into a tissue. It's what do you, what do absolutely you? worse than me so far. I would rather have somebody chewing in my no, ear. No, 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 no. Then have somebody blow no. their snot next to me when I'm trying to eat. No. Why are they? Why are you sitting next to somebody? Do you want their snot dripping out of their nose instead well, of you yeah, hearing their nose? I want blowing? them to go to the bathroom and take care of of look they're not, liquids and crap coming out of their an right. orifice in their body. Get it out of my face. Go to the restroom. Take care of that. Okay, at a restaurant, I'm with you. What about here? Like we're we're at a commercial break, and I need to blow my nose. Should I have to leave? I, the room? I don't care. I'm not eating. Okay, it's about food. It's with the environment. It's, it's mostly about. Eating. Now, you, you played sports growing up. What about the blowing of the nose out onto the ground? It's absolutely disgusting. Oh, you're not a fan of that? I don't care if you do it. Just, yeah. I don't really want to see it. Every now and then, it feels pretty good. Yeah. Just give it I a mean, big I, old... I, I, I've done that, and you know, out at deer camp, whatever, yeah. outside, but... Matt doesn't because he's on scent control. He can't let his scent get out there. True. I, I'm probably the one who cares about that the least. I don't know. I'm pretty not concerned about it. I grew up with a dad who smoked in the deer stand. I think we talked about this. Yeah. I, I used to, I used to smoke, and when I when I smoked during deer season, I'd be riding my blind, and that deer come right in front of me. Oh, yeah. I don't. They don't care. No. That's when I found out the whole cover scent was just a really good marketing scheme. Very much so. Ozone, uh, carbon, even beyond lockers. that, you know, from your yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. Don't do it in a restaurant. Excuse yourself. I Please, Hey, gosh. if you do blow your nose in the restaurant, I don't care. Uh, what You got to blow your nose, man. I get it. No, go. you it, could go blow it somewhere else. It's not like what, a sneeze uh, what, when it just it comes upon you. No. A, yeah. A, a nose blow you control. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, I think for years, all the, all the old men that just carried hankies and just blew their nose anywhere they, they pleased. I mean, let's go back to that. I'm all about the hanky and blown wherever you blow I your think, nose. I think the handkerchief is a more for wiping at the table. And if you need to blow, you, you excuse yourself. That's just me. You just carry it with you. Uh, to each their own. I, you know, if you blow, I don't really care. It doesn't bother me. I'm with me. Troy on this one. It doesn't affect me. Yeah. All right. Uh, here's another one from, from our listener, Josh. Yeah. Might get me in trouble. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't get it. Uh, pickup trucks that are super high on lift kits are super low for street racing. 
like uh like the the movie we like to watch that he hates. Fast and Furious? Yeah. They don't have trucks in that movie. Yeah, they do. No, they don't. They just have a bunch of rice burners. The they par- got the parts delivery truck is a red F one fifty and it is low. Yeah. Uh, You're welcome because I've you never have. seen it. <laughs> Pickup trucks were created for the tradesmen or farmers to be a utility, not to be dressed as sports cars. I agree, 100%. In fact, I think we brought this up before. I, I'm glad they brought this up. I don't even know why Chet has a truck. What are you talking about? <laughs> I've never owned anything but a truck my entire life. And so my son, uh, before Thanksgiving, like, hey, when are you going to be back for Thanksgiving? He's like, uh, the day... Um, after so you had class or something and then you had to go do a doctor's appointment and and then i said you leaving after your doctor's appointment he's like no i've got to help some people move and i was like oh i got out that you're you got a truck and he's like yeah it's out so now he's like a utility Uh, you know for all the all the college kids oh and you just said utility so why aren't pickup trucks called utility vehicles you're picking up stuff i guess i don't know pick up uh, instead of SUVs holding the title of That's utility, sport utility. Yeah, there's no sport in a truck. It's just manliness. <laughs> it's a it's a pickup. Yeah, nice. That was a, that was Josh's pickup last pickup truck. One. Sport utility. Yeah, I. Do you, you call it a pickup? Right. I call it pickup. Call it truck. Whatever. Yeah. It could truck, be truck. Truck is just short. Pickup truck. Right. Trucks just, right. just the short version of pickup or pickup yeah. truck. Yeah. I've always got a pickup. But uh, the big jacked up trucks that are always clean, pavement princesses. That's a pavement princess. That's what Stone calls them. <laughs> like, that, that, that truck's never seen a dirt road. Got all the LED lights under it and those oh, yeah. thin wheel with the big rims. Pavement the, the, the second racing. you hit a pothole with that, oh. the whole thing is done. Dude, this is the dumbest thing. Or the or the trucks that are, are squatted like this, oh, or, or yeah. squatted like this, dumb, <laughs> yeah. dumb, dumb. Yeah. I, I, I even hate trucks that are squatted. I hate the people. Uh, I don't hate the people, but I hate trucks that uh, where people have put the leveling kit on them, so that when they actually are hauling a load, then it squats. It squats in the back, but those headlights are right in your face. I am not a fan of that because there's a reason that that angle is built into your truck, so that when you're towing a load. It's not but to bring that peop- front end all the way up. Those people never have a load anyway. But on the occasion they do, I yeah. seem to find them, and then it's blinding me. One of the things, and it's thanks to you, uh, I'm able to go buy corn at the co-op now. And uh, so I pull up with the, with the 55-gallon drums right. in the bed of my truck. It's so much cheaper, by the way. Have I, have I given you guys the prices on this stuff? I know it's cheaper. Significantly cheaper. Way cheaper. A whole lot cheaper. Well, anyway, I pull up to the co-op and pull under one of the big silos, like through this tunnel where the semis go in and they put corn in them. Yeah. And they got these barrels in the bed of my truck and they just like open the chute and just, and it's pretty cool when you're sitting there and you just feel your truck start to start to squat in the back because you're getting that load dumped in on there. And this guy, the second time I went, the dude like mounded it up in there. The first guy left like too many inches. So I got, I got an extra, uh, 50 pounds um just off of that around. yeah how it's much su- how much did you have to sweep out of the bed of your truck quite a bit yeah yeah it's but pain. it's a pain isn't it not because not this time not because he missed the other guy like the first time i went he put the wrong shoot down and just missed all the barrels altogether. <laughs> and it's like oh my bad and then was that free corn and this time no because you, you, you're pay paid by it. weight oh. they weigh your truck before you go in and oh, when you gotcha. come out. and then uh the second time i went he didn't miss, but he filled them up so full I had to scrape it out in the bed of my truck. Yeah. I have a broom up there, so I just crawl up in the back of that truck and broom it out. But it's kind of a pain. But now do you see what I mean? We were just going to have him dump it in the bed of your truck. I said, yeah. better take the barrels. Yeah, take the barrels. It's hard getting out of there. But, yeah, that, of all the trucks and truckiness that I've had, that one it kind of takes you to a different level. When you're pulling in where the semis go and – they're they're dropping stuff out of the sky. It's kind of like when I'm pulling my my uh, gooseneck. Yeah, and I got my tractor on the back. It's like, yeah, I'm basically the manliest man on this road right now. <laughs> yes. 
Yeah, and, then, and then you got all those built-in features on on like uh so the f-350 because uh, uh back when i was helping a buddy up in colorado um dig a, a septic system for his hunting camp um i was running a uh, a skid steer and the uh one broke down because we we broke a hydraulic line and uh had to or the ones that they they had hooked up weren't the correct ones and so when you went to turn the bucket it yeah busted the line so we had to go pick up this uh, other doozy of a of a skid steer, and once we all finished up, I had to take it. Like getting it up the mountain wasn't a big deal, but going back down, it was like you wanted to stop, and that that skid steer on the back was just pushing you down the mountain. Like you'd, you'd hit the brakes and just yeah, and you're like oh crap. <laughs> and so the my truck's got that downhill descent control. Uh-huh. Boom, push that. I didn't have I didn't have to touch the pedal. I didn't have to do anything. Just smooth right down. I no mean, way. Yeah, it was. Almost too slow. I was like, we're going a little too slow here. Is it? It hits the brakes and, and does the transmission? It, it does the transmission, the brakes, everything to keep you from lo- losing sweet. traction. It is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, we've never, you know, I'm from Kansas, you never, never have to use something like that. And then go to Colorado, beep. Yeah. Smooth. That's cool. Anyway. Sorry, sorry we went Charlie. off on trucks there. Sorry, right, That's all I got. Okay. All right. All right. We're going to take a commercial break. We come back. Top three aggravating things about a grocery store. Are you driving traffic to your website? Do you have an engaging homepage? Better yet, does your homepage have a video? We recently created a video for a client about his business and the services they provide. Since he placed the video on the homepage of their website, he has had a number of clients specifically say they decided to use his services because of that video. At Trussell Media, we help businesses create engaging videos to host on their websites, email to clients, and use in their social media marketing. Contact us if you're interested in creating a video for your homepage today. TrussellMedia.com. Fill out the form at TrussellMedia.com slash contact. Let us help you tell your story through video. And we're back. I was thinking maybe we, uh, maybe we have you take a driver's test line live on air. Hey, the, you know what's even funny? You know exam. what's really funny about this? No. The first time when I was 15 to mm-hmm. go get my driver's license, I failed the science test. There, there you go. <laughs> and he's arguing with us. And he's arguing I'm with us. I'm not kidding. My dad made me wait like another month before I could go retake it. I yeah. was like, oh, come on. He's like, can't believe you failed <laughs> <laughs> the science. You didn't, it, you didn't fail the driving part, which is usually the hardest part. Right. You failed the, the science, science test yeah. that's like on it's paper. The pictures. It's the pictures. <laughs> right. <laughs> Idiot. All right. Um, Matt. We're going to go with your top three aggravating things about a grocery store. Oh, yeah. I got a good list. Well, you know. You don't go grocery shopping. I don't go to grocery stores. But the few times I have have reaffirmed these three things. Okay. Number three, self-checkout. I absolutely despise Hmm. self-checkout. Amen. If I wanted to look up the skew for an onion, the skew for a bell pepper. Yeah. I, I would have gone to a grocery bagging grocery checkout school. <laughs> okay. I did it's not, not that I, hard I did anymore. not go there. By the way, did you see that there That's is God, so much easier, but there is a party for self checkout employees. No, what? Somebody has started this online thing where <laughs> all the self checkout people, you self-checkout people watch you there's going to be a party. big online party. Um, so there's a lot of people attending. That's pretty funny. I'm not going to be one of them because I refuse to self check out. I will wait 30 minutes if I have to. I don't, it's not that the, big a deal with me. Behind the old lady with the, I hate it. I just, I don't like, I don't like doing it. Um, I went to, uh, matter of fact, I went to Home Depot and I was forced. 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 Because they didn't have any other one over They had zero people. And oh. so, it, uh, I've already, I've written Home Depot, like some really Mm -hmm. strongly worded emails over this latest experience that I've had with them. (laughs) And uh, (laughs) I bet every retailer is glad you don't shop much anymore. Well, you know, at least our complaints have gone down. Where's Matt Amos been? (laughs) Hey, if somebody's done a good job, I'll email just the same. I I, I did that uh, just recently. And I said, you know, this is the reason that. Companies like yours are as good as they are is because you have employees like this. 
you know, and, and so I'll, I'll send out the, the kudos absolutely uh, when they're earned. But it, number one, I want, I'll save it for a later date. Because it's a whole long So story. one thing self-checkout's good for, though, <laughs> I was in self-checkout the other night at Target. and I Theft? No. Oh. I noticed this couple, this guy and this girl, and this girl was kind of like hugging on this guy, but I didn't see anything that they were in line to buy. Yeah. And so then I took a little closer look, and he had a little box of condoms in his ah. hand. And he was like playing it off like he he didn't have any condoms, you know. And he was like looking around, and she was all hugging all over him. And uh, I just watched him because it was hilarious. Yeah, he went up there and scanned. It's on video. Yeah, yeah he video went up everything there, that's going on there. He went up there and he scanned it real quick, threw it in a bag, you know, paid real quick, and then they ran out of there. I came home and told Hannah. <laughs> Like what I just witnessed, and uh, I was cracking up. Just so think hard. about all the things you could buy now. You didn't have to go <laughs> talk to somebody about right. that. Right? Hilarious. Well, homo just sending about to be going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they definitely weren't married. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, <laughs> you're married. You ain't hiding it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, number two, oh. the uh, the store shoppers or your uh people that are fulfilling online orders for delivery yeah like uh, chet pointed this out like uh i can't remember a while back and i'd never experienced it and then immediately upon going to the store there was a there was this person with this huge cart with these bins that were labeled this this and this in my way and they I'm will like, run you oh over. there was there yeah there's no oh, so sorry sir sorry uh, i didn't see you there like move, like you're, yeah. you're, you've got the entire aisle taken up here. I can't even get around you. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it was making me. I was getting very, very frustrated. And and those idiots are the worst shoppers. They're they're well. Here's the deal. Sorry. What do you have to ask yourself? Do you blame them or do you blame the people who won't go in the store themselves? I blame myself if I get something messed up <laughs> when I order something online. <laughs> No, I mean, like from a the, grocery- pe- the reason people are ordering groceries online is the reason you're having a difficult time shopping in the store. Blame the people shopping online. Well, I'm I'm, I'm that person most of the time. Yeah, shame, <laughs> shame, blame you. yourself. I, I won't even go That's in what there. Chad's saying, I just I let somebody else deal with. I've the- seen the problem, and the problem is me. <laughs> and I, re- I refuse to go in there. I'll let somebody else deal with those store shoppers. I'll just let them do my bidding. I'll send the store shoppers in the way of everybody else in the store. 100%. Hey, push that guy out of the way. No. Daddy needs his cube meat. <laughs> and they never get the right stuff. It's always... Well, we got a head of lettuce that was like this big last time. I said, I'm going to buy the lettuce next time. <laughs> I'm a- Serenity now! <laughs> <laughs> They're everywhere. I'm sick of it. I, uh, this may or may not be on my list. I, I probably made your list, yeah. but... It was one. I was like, I just can't stand them. Like, and since you pointed it out, it eats at me more and more yeah. because it's not just the grocery store. It's Lowe's. It's Walmart. Oh, it's, it's all of them. Like literally anywhere you go, there's somebody with this whole cart Dude, in Lowe's, your way. Lowe's, they line their, it's in the wood aisle. They will oh, line I've seen that. Yeah. the carts upon carts of the orders of the orders blocking off access to merchandise. It's just it's just an a row going all the way to the back of the Shit, store. Can't get his two by four. I know it's right in the way. It's two by four. The good ones too. The prime. Yeah, I I yeah. know because Menards has crap lumber, so I go to Lowe's. To buy I that stuff. I went to Menards for the first time oh, about a month ago. Their two by fours are trash. I was not impressed. They have mm-hmm. a lot of different kinds of lumber, and then never mind. We're going down a path. And uh, number one, uh, most uh, uh, aggravating, excuse me, aggravating thing about a grocery store, people. <laughs> people. Other people are there. Oh, yeah, I, my. I, yeah, I agree. <laughs> like, uh, you just, you, you, you know, hey, love your neighbor. I get it. I'm. It's one of those things. I just can't be in that situation I, and see stupidity and then be forced to socially not to comment directly my, on that stupidity my i don't have a the grocery store i don't have a problem with people in general oh I, it's yeah. the inconsiderate people like i'm gonna leave my cart in the middle of the aisle while i go look at that thing 15 feet away and where nobody get around me like that kind of thing 
burns me up. But just other people there, it doesn't bother me. I just I don't I don't like. I don't like crowds. And then you got, you got the people that just stand there and they got their cart on this side, but they're standing and shopping on this side. They're just, they're blocking it. Like, yeah, I'm with you. If they're considerate, they're like, Oh, let me get out of your way. Excuse me. Yeah. You know, still, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, and it's not all people, but it's the inconsiderate. In all honesty, if you're going grocery shopping, not just going in to pop in to buy one thing, you're probably having to apologize like three or four times a trip. At least. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I'm in your way. Oh, my, my apologies. Oh, like, whoops. I do yeah. the, I do, I do the, I do the corner check, you know, at yeah, the end of the yeah, aisle. Yeah. I'm like, I, I, I give it a test. Uh-huh. I don't just, I don't just zip her in, you know, I actually <laughs> yield to the crossing traffic. I, I do a, uh, there's no I signs do, in the grocery store. I do a store. pull out back up. That's what I do. You yeah. Know, you test yeah. it. Ooh, ooh. That's yeah. what I mean. You test the waters and if you don't hear somebody go, uh, 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 yeah, you're good to go. Yeah. You know what they need to do? Put them little mirrors on the corner. That we they see. used to. They used to have that everywhere. Now they don't do it. They don't do it no more. All right. Like thank the you, big Matt. mirror in the back of Walgreens so they can see who's shoplifting, you know? They, well, here's the, So I, I don't want to get you guys' hopes up, but I read an article, I think, in Forbes last week that self-checkout's going away. That over time they're going to phase it out because they're losing 10, 12x uh inventory losses for sure than in the past and, and some of it's you know they change barcodes uh with uh <laughs> yeah we talked about that in before. the back they do they're all they're doing all kinds of stuff get pretty good at it and and here well, and plus people can just walk out of stuff without without anybody chasing them well because they're they're well, they're telling employees for safety don't go after but, these people but uh i was at walmart just the other day Got my receipt checked. Yeah. Like, look, if you're going to give me the leeway to check myself out and you're going to have video cameras and you're going to weigh things when I put them in, like there's all kinds of features that they're putting in here. If you go to all that trouble, they have the cameras in your car at the low level now to see if you, you forgot a case of Coke or something down there. Didn't scan that. They could see merchandise still in the cart. You're going to put all that in there, and then you're going to make me stop so somebody can read my reason. And then, <laughs> like, you're going to be able to, like, uh, I've got 315 items in my cart. I just spent $15,000 here at Walmart. Yeah. And, uh, but she read it. She read the receipt, and there was a lot of stuff on there. She didn't look in a single bag. Like, she just. This is a this is a very nice receipt, sir. I, what do you do? You profiling me based <laughs> off what I'm spending? <laughs> you sir yeah. work at Coke. You, you should have you should have gotten the <laughs> no salt added green beans, a can of green beans. <laughs> sir, are you sure you don't want to go right. back and get the light version? We're uh we're on my top three now. I I am not opposed to the self checkout because I could typically go faster than any other line. So as long as I don't have to wait for it. And Target's really bad about not having a lot of self checkout stations. Yeah, but uh, you don't you don't have enough room to do your self checkout there. There's just not enough space. I need space. We know Walmart's got like the few items self checkout, and now they have the big cart. But there's not checkout. enough. There's not. There's only like four of those. Like well, it depends on which one. you Well, get to. there's only like four of them that have green light. The what? <laughs> yeah. That's, <laughs> yeah there's, there's a bunch car, of them that aren't open card only how, cash only how can you how can you not open up all your self-checkout lines it's not like you're waiting for employees to be there well, uh, that my, I, i'm always under the impression that they're broken well they fix them that's why you have robots <laughs> instead of humans twenty thousand dollars chet twenty thousand dollars cheaper than paying for a person <laughs> <laughs> but give me more room at the self-checkout number two uh-uh. number two and this is from directly for brad and i agree with it why can't all the meat be in the same place? <laughs> Why do you have to put bacon and sausage back by the eggs? Why can't you put bacon and sausage with the pork? Why? Why do you, Why does it have to be in the back of the store? Why, the eggs should be with the chicken. You should be able... That's right. You should be able to either set the up milk, the store... The butter and the yogurt should all be at the same place. You set up the store as if you're doing it by meal, like all the breakfast, all the lunches, and all the dinners... Or you set it up by commodity, all the meats, all the grains, all the whatever else is, the dairies. You, you don't do both. But that's the grocery store is trying to do both, and you shouldn't do that. 
If I want meat, I should go to the meat aisle, the meat section. Uh, just because it's bacon doesn't mean I should have to go all the way over to the other side of the store. What store are you shopping at? All of them. <laughs> Where do you? Where's the bacon? Well, I uh, I don't know. Uh, I would have to ask my personal shopper, whoever goes and gets my food. But, well, I'll tell you this: if you ask them a question, they don't know where anything is. But uh, the the most recent uh, time that I went to the store was I was at uh, um, I was at Walmart in Kansas City or one of the suburbs thereof, mm-hmm. and everything was lined up. The only thing that I couldn't find, I was like, where? I was like, we have everything. Where's the cheese? It wasn't next. That was misplaced. But the all the meats, bacon's, everything now, was all the bacon on this huge back wall. In the Walmart that I shop in, the bacon is back with the breakfast sausage, which is next to the eggs and butter. Yep. That's how which it is. is nowhere near the meat. Really? Really. Huh. And yeah. that, that's how it is. Meat's all the way up front by the bread. That's how it is at uh, Ray's Apple Mart, too, in Council Grove, which I love that grocery store. But, um, yeah, put it, just put the meat together, for heaven's sake. Meat's meat. Put it together. Uh, number one, the employee shoppers, just get out the way. Oh. Um, and people quit ordering stuff online because it's convenient for you when it's making everybody else's life inconvenient. They could just uh, shop from home as well. There's what's the most selfish thing you can do is order groceries online. I'm kidding. It's not. But get quit doing it so just so much. And the people that are doing their grocery shopping for a living, running around with their big blue carts all in the way, you need to know where things are. I, I, I <laughs> Hey, I'm looking for graham crackers. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I don't know. But dude, you shop for a living in, just in the store. You got to be able to tell me where everything is. All they, their all li- they, their all little computer tells them exactly yeah, where it is. It says E6. The, they're not looking at what it is. They need one from E6, and that's what they're Well, grabbing. they're definitely uh-huh. not looking at what it is because I've gotten rotten strawberries. Dude, that's how they unload small inventory. Small lettuce. <laughs> that's 100%. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, go to the trash can and fill these orders before you go <laughs> Right. Up. Yeah, oh, it's ridiculous. Man. They frustrate the heck out of me. And they're always in the way. Those carts are so big. Uh, Yeah. I'm not a fan. All right, Troy. Man, this has got us fired up. We're I know. Going along. Uh, no, we're not, because number three is other people. <laughs> number two is self-checkout. And number one is employee shopping for pickup. No kidding. Boom. Oh, all the way that may That may be one of the one or two times. We have all agreed. We've all agreed. <laughs> we, we, had, we all had gumbo on our alternative uh but that was only one thing. We basically had all the same. No, things. no, 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 no. With the no, exception no. of you and self checkout. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. We were close. Yeah, close. Oh, shit. He had the meats. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Matt. The Good meat word. Sweats. <laughs> all right. Um. The uh, the good word. Well, I'm still trying to scroll. Self checkout. <laughs> um, Check yourself. The good word for today would be um, resist. And um, if I had to pick a verse, there's 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 a few good ones. Um, but when I when I think I'm going to go Hebrews uh, or he, yeah Hebrews two eighteen. Uh, for because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. And, uh, uh, you know, Chet, we were talking just a, just a little bit ago um, about, you know, I quit chewing back in, uh, back in June and haven't touched it at all. Haven't even thought about it um, other than once. And I, I literally have had zero temptation to even go buy a can or, or anything. Yeah. Um, and it's, it, for that, for the people that I know that have quit, Mm -hmm. they're like, that's the hardest thing that I've ever done was, was to quit chewing. Yeah. And super like. Had had a problem. Yeah, it was like over, and it's not like I decided I was going to quit. Yeah, I just woke up and I was like, I just I don't feel like it anymore. I don't know where that came from. Right. 
but I just, uh, the desire was gone. Yeah. And, uh, I've had, uh, again, zero, zero temptation to, to go back into it. Um, I don't know why that is, uh, cause but you'll it, take it, but I'll take it cause yeah. it's been very simple. So now I've been trying to apply that resisting to other parts of my life. So yeah. I think it was a, I think it was a lesson given to me, um, in order to, to grow maybe. Yeah. Um, because now it's like, okay, well if I can, if I can cut that out, what else can I do to cut out and be healthier or whatever, you know, and yeah. not, you know, and I'm not going to get into cause I don't make new year's resolutions. I don't do any of that stuff. Right. Um, I just make necessary changes when I see that they need to be changed. I don't wait for a specific day to do it. Um, and so most recently I've started to cut back, um, not, not quit all the way just yet, but I'm starting to wean myself off of sugar. If you didn't notice, I ordered half, half and half, half tea. tea. Yeah, yeah. And so I've been slowly you already cut back fifty percent. So cut, just cutting back a little bit at a time. You know, making it making it more manageable. It's not like I'm just going to cut out all sugar because I love my coffee with sugar in the morning. You know, yeah. there there are some things that I just you know, but I can cut out the donuts. Yeah. You know, I don't need to have donuts, even though they're so good. My my daughter's friend. <laughs> <laughs> works at a donut shop and so she will give us like yeah. donut like pretty regularly now i guess uh -huh. so it's like that that's a huge temptation for me um and then i uh this thanks this last thanksgiving uh my mom made chocolate chip cookies which those mm -hmm. are like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can't give it's those a, up. It's a tradition. You can't give up traditions. Can't, you know, Don't so, hurt your mom's feelings. No, but so I hate those. You yeah. know, but it's like okay, now I got to get, now I got to get jump, jump back on the on the wagon. I gotta, yeah, can't fall off. You know, again, yeah. at least until Christmas, and I'm gonna I'll fall off for Christmas, but then get back on. You know, yeah. But as far as the day to day, making conscious choices. Yeah, making making conscious choices to to do better. Um, after having quit chewing, because I was just like, well, what else can I, what else can I give up? Right. You know, being to, to become a more being mean, you'd give that up. I don't really see myself as mean. <laughs> um, I haven't identified that as a problem. Yeah, that's the first step. Per yeah, se. they say sugar has the same effect on the brain as heroin. That's what they said about chewing. I'm just not finding it. Well, I, and when I, I don't I, think <laughs> chewing is when I yes, he does have a relationship with heroin. He would know. <laughs> I do. Uh, yeah, I know. Big I know. one. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, and, and, uh, and I, I've, I've been thinking about that too. And I was like, well, maybe, uh, you know, maybe the good Lord just been looking out for me this whole time with, uh, pain meds and, and all this stuff where I just, I, for, for whatever reason, I have an addictive personality. Um, but I, I didn't get addicted to pain meds and yeah. I, you know, I'm then, yeah. And you I, were able to quit chewing. I, when I wanted. was addicted to chew, was able to give it up. Yeah. And you know, so what else can I? You had to give it up because of inflation. No, You're no. You're saving so much money now. I am saving quite a bit of money. But uh, what's funny is um, the most expensive can of chew I ever bought was in Canada. And I spent 20 U.S. dollars on one can. Because mm -hmm. that's where all their health taxes and stuff come from, yeah. comes from is taxes on chew and stuff. I heard just recently because uh, it's on my mantle. And somebody was asking me about it, and they they had just been to Canada, and they're like, "Oh man, you know what? What is that?" And I said, "Man, that's the most expensive can of chew I've ever bought." And it's up on my mantle next to the bear skull, next to the bullet. Yeah. And uh, uh, he's like, "Well, how, how much was it?" And I go, twenty bucks." And he goes, "That's cheap." <laughs> you know, normally, people are like, "Man, that's crazy." Yeah. And he goes, "Yeah." It's, he goes, "It's like forty five, fifty dollars a can now." Wow. He goes, "So a log is like two hundred fifty bucks." Holy up, cow! Up I was like, "What?" I oh my god! How did how do people even continue to you, chew? You get in trouble if you drive that stuff up there. Uh, so in I, large quantities, probably. So <laughs> I make a run, like, Smokey and the Bandit. Like, well, <laughs> when I uh, when, when I go down. fishing, um, you know, up to uh, up to Alaska because they've got some insane prices too. Um, or if we were bear hunting in uh, in Canada, you're allowed to to take two logs of 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 dip with you. So that's 10, 10 cans. Yeah. And you know, whatever I didn't chew, I, I just leave up there for yeah. everybody to, to have. Cause like, man, they're shoot, save some money. Here you go. Yeah. Yeah. Good gracious. So I'm, I'll probably still keep that tradition. I'll buy those cans for them. 
uh, to take up. But Good word, resist, from Hebrews resist. 2, verse 18. Hey, I will say, uh, if anybody out there is struggling with addiction, especially alcohol, uh, there's a really good book out called Escaping the Evil Clown. And it's written by Craig Beck, who was a, a radio guy back in the day. Uh, I think he's still doing radio, probably podcast now, but uh, in the UK. Um, but when I quit drinking, it was the book that was the catalyst for me to actually finally giving it up and understanding kind of what my addiction was and what it was like. And so if anybody out there is struggling with that, I highly recommend that book called Escaping the Evil Clown, and it's written by Craig Beck. So, All right, and watch out for that. It's the holidays. Yeah, don't, for sure. You don't need to lean on alcohol to cope with your crazy uh, family. Yeah, probably just make it just worse. Just tune in to the Hard Headed Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Have some laughs. Learn a little bit about driving. Yeah. All right, thanks for joining us. We'll uh, talk merging, to you again merging. next week. Not driving, merging. That's part of driving. Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.